Welcome to Monday's edition of COVID-19. We're starting this new work week with a daily tally above 1,000. Accordingly, social restrictions have been raised to level four here in Seoul and its surrounding areas, while authorities have launched an aggressive COVID-19 testing campaign. Also this week, inoculations using the Pfizer vaccines from Israel are poised to begin. Now, we have more on that later on in the program. Here first is our Kwon Soa with the broader pandemic coverage. Now, Soa, do start us off. Sure, Sunny. We're starting off the new work week with the highest ever daily caseload we had for a Monday as 1,100 infections were reported as of 12 a.m. And that's 1,063 domestic cases and 37 cases from abroad. And with that, the total number of infections here in Korea stands at 169,146. The death toll at 2,044 with one additional fatality. And now we've got almost Almost 13,000 people in quarantine and uh, there are now uh, concerns over uh, if there are sufficient treatment centers because there are a number of people, especially the younger population that have lighter symptoms who have to be treated at such centers. Now since last Wednesday, Korea is seeing over 1,000 infections straight for the straight six day and although we are seeing a drop here by around 220 infections uh, compared to to Sunday. That is no reason to be relieved as of yet. Also on Saturday, we had a record high of 1,378 infections. And although we are seeing this decline this Monday, as I said, uh, we still have to monitor the rest of the week because if we compare the figure of Monday when usually the figures do drop following fewer tests over the weekend, we are seeing a gradual uh, rise here in cases. Even last week, we were in the 700s and now have jumped to the one thousands. So uh, yes, those are the updates uh, that I have for now. Right. So which is exactly why because of those alarming figures, like I mentioned earlier, we have fresh restrictions in place here in the metropolitan region. That's correct. Beginning this Monday, the greater Seoul area will be under level four social distancing measures out of the revised uh, four tier system. So that will be until the 25th this month, meaning for two weeks. Now, one of the biggest changes that citizens in this region will have to abide by is a ban on private gatherings of three or more people past 6 p.m. Also, nightlife entertainment venues will remain closed while most other venues such as restaurants and coffee shops will have to close at 10 p.m. Now schools in Gyeonggi-do province and Incheon mainly have started remote uh, studying, remote uh, learning that is, this Monday and Seoul is expected to follow suit this Wednesday. Now although only the capital region is currently under the toughest social distancing measures, a recent development that's raising concern is the rising number of cases outside the metropolitan region. So if you take a look at the proportion here, we've got 27.1% of cases that are now occurring outside the capital area, and that had been at around 20% just a week ago. And here's more of the recent situation by a senior health ministry official. The fourth wave is now underway centered around the capital region and spreading mainly among people in their 20s to 40s through close contact in daily settings. On top of that, the Delta variant is also posing a growing threat. The situation is also worsening in regions outside the capital, with cases rising in Daejeon, the Chungcheongdo provinces, Busan, Gyeongsangnam-do province and Jeju Island. So let's take a closer look at where the newest cases have occurred as of this Monday. We are seeing here uh, places in red are the places with triple digit figures, those in yellow or orange in the double digits, and then here the single digits in blue, which means we do not have many places that have single digit figures now. So we have over 400 in the capital, so followed by more than 300 in Gyeonggi-do province. But now the rising concern, especially in the southeastern part of the country, like Busan, seeing over 40 infections and also Daejeon recently has been seeing a resurgence in Chungcheongnam-do province as well. This is why other places apart from the capital region are now also mulling over raising their own social distancing measure level. Right. So I'm moving beyond the daily tallies for those regions. What is the latest on the vaccination front here? 
Well, Sonny, uh, as of midnight, uh, we had uh, people aged 55 to 59 who could make their reservation for a vaccination in the third quarter this year. And people aged between 50 and 54 will be able to do the same next week. And also more uh, process on the vaccination. The actual inoculation beginning today, there are more people that are to enter the military for their mandatory military service later this year between July and September. That is their vaccination has also kicked off and beginning tomorrow uh, more people will be subject to Pfizer vaccination with the doses that recently arrived from Israel and if we take a look at the figures here we've got now uh, over 5.8 million people who received uh, who are fully vaccinated that is and that is around 14 percent of the nation's population that is 11.4 percent uh, of the nation's population and meanwhile staying on the vaccination front uh, Pfizer is expected to meet with FDA officials on Monday and uh, that because uh, the drug maker has recently requested for an authorization for a third dose of Pfizer vaccine or a booster shot as it claims that booster shots are needed within 12 months of full vaccination and on to other news news abroad a 90 year old woman in Belgium who had died in March from COVID-19 and was unvaccinated was found to have been infected with both the alpha and beta variants which were first identified in the UK and South Africa with experts warning of such possible dual infections. And uh, moving to Vietnam a country once hailed for its containment measures is seeing record high figures of infections in the past week with close to 2000 new cases reported on Monday. Its economic hub Ho Chi Minh City is under a two week lockdown since Friday. And uh, Tokyo on Monday has officially entered another state of emergency that will last until August 22nd, meaning throughout the summer Olympic season. Other major prefectures have decided to do the same, meaning most Olympic events will be held without spectators. And later in the program, Sunny will also connect to Japan for more on that issue. Last but not least, let's take a look at the figures abroad. Uh, we've got the U.S. now with 34.7 million infections, followed by 30.8 in India. And Brazil is soon uh, to hit 20 million cases if the trend continues here. Also more resurgences in the U.K., which is currently at 5.1 million infections in total. And the total number across the world in COVID-19 infections stands at 187.6 million. And those are the updates that I have for now. Back to you, Sunny. All right, so as always, thank you very much for the coverage. Right, now, before we turn to our next corner, let's take this moment to remind ourselves about the new Level 4 restrictions in place here in the Greater Seoul area starting today, that is July 12th, until the 25th of this month. Now, up to four people are allowed to meet for social purposes until six in the evening, and after six, only two people can do so. To a large extent, this cap on gatherings also extends to family members who reside together. What's more, the number of passengers in a taxi is also limited to two people after six here in the metropolitan region. Weddings and funerals can have family members in attendance with a cap of 49 people only. Also, only one person rallies are permitted. Meanwhile, all incentives for those vaccinated are being withheld. Nightlife entertainment businesses, including bars and clubs, remain shut, while restaurants, cafes, gyms and concert halls are required to close doors at 10 in the evening with strict protocols in place with regard to seating arrangements, ventilation, face masks and visitor logs. Meanwhile, the academic arena has switched to remote learning, as Sua mentioned earlier, while workplaces have 30% of their capacity working from home. Sports stadiums can host no spectators, while outdoor sporting facilities face a cap on the number of players. Hotels and other such accommodations are required to operate at two-thirds of their capacity. Places of worship are allowed to hold online sermons only. Right, also on this Monday, Tokyo enters its fourth state of emergency for six weeks, that is until August 22nd, to stem the spread of COVID-19 amid its hosting of the Summer Olympics starting next Friday. Now, for more on the situation there, I have Hiroki Wada live on the line. Welcome back, Hiroki. Thanks for having me again. Right, Hiroki, let's begin with the outbreak in Tokyo and its surrounding regions. How severe is the situation there? Well, uh... 
We, as you say, we are in the fourth wave of infections, and in Tokyo, we have almost 1,000 cases per day, and it sounds like we are going to pass some mark pretty soon with the current rate. And we have more serious cases in recent days, but one thing to note is that we, we have fewer deaths, which probably is thanks to the increasing number of people receiving uh, vaccination. And the same situation is taking place in areas surrounding Tokyo, in prefecture like Chiba, Saitama, Kanagawa. Uh, if you look at, the, look at the whole nation, basically the same situation. We have more than 2,000 cases in recent days. But the uh, uh, number of serious cases and deaths are decreasing. Uh, according to the Prime Minister's office, the percentage of people who received vaccination for the first time is like a quarter of the total population as of yesterday. And people who are fully vaccinated, meaning who got two jabs, uh, is like 13.7%. Even though there are some cases of cancellation that local municipalities that are responsible for doing the jobs due to uh, you know regional lack of enough supply. So that's the overall picture, I would say. I see. Hiroki, tell us a bit about the measures in place in the Japanese capital city and perhaps a public response to the emergency restrictions. Well, uh, one of the uh, focus areas is to stop uh, restaurants and bars from serving alcohol. And the uh, argument from the government is that, well, people, when they got drunk, they tend to become talkative and loud and sus you know, exhales a lot of uh, viruses if they are infected and thus ended up sp spreading the infection. So that's why they are introducing this alcohol, alcohol ban again. But I, I mean, naturally, people are very, especially owners of the restaurants and bars are really kind of pissed off because they think that they are unfairly targeted. And also, speaking of this, emergency declaration because it's a first time people are getting fed up and people are getting used to it. And uh, one office worker told the mind Shimbun earlier today that, you know, no one in his company is talking about this emergency measure because it becomes kind of a routine. And there are a large number of people visiting entertainment districts and beaches and, you know, uh, those kind of places this Sunday because it was the last holiday before the introduction of the fourth uh, declaration of emergency. So it's really difficult to stop people from, you know, moving around even in this latest measure. Right. All the restaurants, Hiroki, are closing then at around 8 p.m., is it, under the state of emergency right. in Tokyo? Right, 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 right. I see. And they're not allowed to, well, they're they are advised not to offer alcoholic beverages, and those places are asked to be closed for the duration of the declaration. But some shops are saying that we can't survive with that uh, income from selling alcoholic beverages and stuff like that. So they are, you know, no blake cause and arguing them to follow the government rules is not easy task. Right. Hiroki, given Tokyo's state of emergency, its venues for the Olympic Games will be closed to spectators. How is the public respond? How is the public responding to this reality? And how are relevant authorities preparing for the no spectator events? Mm -hmm. You know, when the Mainichi did an opinion poll in late June, more than thirty percent of the respondents said that the games should be held with the spectators, and it was almost as large as the number of people who want the events to be cancelled. So people do want the games to be held without fans if they have to go ahead. And a lot of people, uh, I think, uh, happy about the fact that the government made the decision not to uh, let fans in the events in Tokyo and its environs, as well as uh, pl places such as Hokkaido in the northernmost part of the country, and also in Fukushima, where the 2011 earthquake and uh, nuclear accidents hit. It, it's a kind of symbolic decision by the Fukushima governor to do the events in their prefecture with uh, fans, because the whole 
Tokyo Olympics it was set, was promoted as a symbol of the rebuilding from the devastation caused by the earthquake and other incidents. Right. But I mean, yeah, one local said that it's a sad decision, but it's a right decision, you know, right. considering the COVID-19 situation. Hiroki, what has been shared so far about the potential economic loss then of staging the Olympics in the absence of spectators? Well, uh, even before this decision not to let uh, fans to see the games, the organizers already decided not to accept foreign visitors, right? So a big part of the expected income from uh, those foreign visitors are already gone and people right now not really talking about losses from the you know no farm games the focus right now is how to survive the economic downturn caused by the covid 19 pandemic and how the government can help ordinary people as well as business owners to ride the rough waters and in as a general rule, when the organizer cannot cover the cost, it's up to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government to foot the bill. And if Tokyo cannot do that, then the national government has to take up the rest. I see. And how have the latest events, Hiroki, with regard to COVID-19 containment efforts and the Tokyo Olympics affected the SIGA administration's approval ratings? Well, it's, not, it's tough on SIGA, even though the number are improving for him. Uh, again, going back to the Mainichi poll, 55% of people, respondents were negative about the administration, while 34% were supportive. And as for the government's anti-COVID measures, 60% are negative and 20% are positive. And the luring LDP didn't uh, fare well in the last Tokyo Metro Metropolitan Assembly. I would say that the COVID situation in general and the government measures they've taken so far. Right, Hiroki, you mentioned that foreign uh, spectators were not allowed to partake in the Olympics anyway, so right. we'll start then. What mm -hmm. are the prospects then of hosting foreign heads of state to the upcoming Olympics, do you think? You know, we at this moment, we are not 100% sure who are really coming. But uh, one of the organizers said last week that even though some events are held with us spectators, uh, those spectators do not include like members of the International Olympic Committee or international federations. And if those people are allowed to get in, into some of the games and especially the opening ceremony, then I think that it's natural to assume that foreign dignitaries who even care to physically visit Japan at this timing would be allowed to attend the opening ceremony, for example. I see. All right, Hiroki, as always, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. Thanks for having <laughs> Kirimida. Pulpirian Moimga Yakso, Vetchurul, Ilte, Tatehako, Chetan, and Janan Chibeso, Momulo Dalana, one of the Chinese. Hangu, Israel, Gane, Pesin, Tuani, Songsa, de Osmida. 
Starting today, that is Monday, July 12th, the Greater Seoul area faces level 4 social restrictions as part of efforts to contain a fourth wave that has been keeping the daily tally above the 1,000 mark for six straight days. Now, for more on this, I have Professor Chung gi from Hallam University. Good to see you again, Professor Chung. Great to be here again. And I also have Professor Kim Eun-gyu from Yonsei University. Welcome back, uh, Professor Kim. Thank you for having me. Right, Professor Zhang, the daily tally, as I mentioned earlier, has been hovering above 1,000 for almost a week now. What do you believe is the reason for this resurgence here on the local front? Of course, the main reason is uh, uh, we all lost uh, alertness, uh, not only in private side, but also the public side. And the main fear of this false uh, surge uh, is the accumulated unconfirmed cases since the beginning of this year. It's almost more than six months has passed uh, without having any confirmed, trying to have uh, more confirmed cases. So that is the main fuel. And uh, by the uh, beginning of June or until the mid-June, uh, uh, the government was too confident about their achievement because they have achieved 25% of first uh, inoculation and they were seeing a bit less uh, confirmed cases every day. Uh, and the weather was getting warmer and warmer. So uh, at that time, the government was releasing uh, very uh, positive uh, things like uh, vaccine incentives and also uh, consumer coupons and like that. And also uh, they have released a new social distance lever, which is a faulty lever, uh, which I think is uh, very, very eased uh, compared to uh, a previous five-tiered one. So, uh, those kind of signs, signals, uh, made people to believe that it's almost over uh, and the vaccine uh, completion is uh, just around the corner. But as we know, uh, there is a severe gap between uh, first achievement uh, of 25% until uh, we're going to resume uh, the, the another vaccine injection. Uh, we cannot resume uh, until the end of uh, July. So. Uh, I think it's, we could avoid this kind of a fourth surge. So I'm, I, I really uh, miss uh, uh, that, that the previous mistake uh, made by uh, government side. Right, so maybe we let our guards down too soon. Mm -hmm. Professor Kim, what are your thoughts on the impact of the new level four social restrictions and the aggressive testing that we have here in the greater Seoul area on taming this fourth wave? Well, if we uh, can have more tests easily, that's going to be helpful. And, uh, but still, the vaccination is going to be the main factor to stop the current surge of uh, cases. And uh, still, we must tighten the uh, quarantine measures, social distancing right now. But the daily cases will rise for some time, as Professor Zhang mentioned. And uh, actually, it showed the same phenomenon on December 2020 when uh, United States and UK and Israel, they started vaccinating one of the first countries in the world, but still they had a high numbers of daily cases. But the uh, good thing is the, uh, the fatality dropped very fast and uh, the total case of uh, occurrence uh, followed a few weeks later. So. Uh, uh, I think uh, right now we, don't, we are p getting short of vaccination, but even though we have enough vaccination, uh, we might have some cases still rising for some time. So uh, vaccine is the key factor. And uh, if there's anybody belong to high risk and not vaccinated, I would say it is urgent to get vaccinated because uh, uh, they might believe that if we do this and this and this, like uh, social distancing, I'm not gonna get infected. But right now we are not dealing with the old variants. We are dealing with the Delta variant and maybe Delta plus even. So uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, vaccination and uh, uh, we should keep all the uh, uh, distancing measuring as of far course. as we can. Right, right. Aside from prevention measures and preemptive testings, Pfizer inoculations are poised to begin tomorrow. Now, that is Tuesday here in Korea with the supplies from Israel. For more, I have Dr. Eyal Leshem at the Shiba Medical Center live on the line. 
Pleasure to have you with us, Dr. Lesham. Good morning. Dr. Lesham, let's begin then with a bit of background on the vaccine swap deal between Korea and Israel, through which the latter has sent 700,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine here. What are your thoughts on this deal? Well, uh, Israel has reached a situation where about 60% of the population are vaccinated, uh, and that includes uh, about half of the population between age 12 and 15. And understanding that the vaccine rate is going to drop and we are not going to be able to use these uh, 700,000 doses very rapidly, it was thought that uh, these doses will be better used elsewhere in uh, Korea, for example, where doses are needed to cover the uh, most vulnerable population and therefore this uh, swap deal was uh, struck. Right. And staying with that, Professor Kim, the Pfizer vaccines, as uh, Dr. Lesham has mentioned, from Israel, poised to expire late now this month. And some have voiced concerns about their effectiveness. How do you respond to these concerns? Well, uh, if you compare uh, drugs that are injectable and some tablets, I would say the regulation for expired date is very flexible for tablets, and which means we have to be strict on injections. And... Uh, Actually, we don't have to worry about the effectiveness uh, in the condition if the uh, expired date is not reached. Uh, but we have to be concerned about the uh, vaccine stored properly. We keep the cold chain until it is delivered to the, uh, to the people. I do believe that the officers well know about these uh, things, uh, who is in charge, and uh, they will give out uh, vaccines which is safe and effective. Right. Professor Chang, Korea will return the same amount of Pfizer vaccines to Israel come this autumn. What are your thoughts on this arrangement? I think this is a big deal and i like to thank Israeli people for accepting a swap deal. Uh, actually, we had the contraction of uh, nearly 100 million uh, doses uh, by the end of this year. but. The thing is, we do not have any vaccine on the rack. So uh, 700,000 is not a big volume, but uh, we are uh, quite in short of uh, vaccine. So that's a very good news. And uh, uh, the gap between uh, the June and the July uh, is a significant uh, amount of uh, uh, duration because uh, during that time, uh, we are, are now facing a Delta variant which is not very effective uh, with even uh, with the current vaccine. Only one shot uh, has been done in 30%, and only 11% has completed a second shot. Even though you have a second, two doses of uh, mRNA vaccine, you will still have uh, a, a very good chance of getting Delta, vac Delta variant. Even though you don't, you don't have, you can prevent the symptomatic uh, Delta variant infection in in 88% uh, uh, published by England, but still you have uh, a quite high chance of uh, 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 Delta variant. Now we don't have any that kind of uh, mRNA vaccine on the rack, so this is very good news. I like to extend this kind of a swap uh, with other nations or other states in the United States. Uh, there will be a, uh, 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 another chance to get over this fourth surge in this Korea. Right. Mm. Hopefully that will be the case mm. in the near future. Mm. Dr. Lesham, I hear the daily tallies also on the rise in Israel amid the presence of both the Delta and Delta Plus variants. Could you tell us a bit more about the situation there? Yes, so Israel has seen the nadir of cases early June when we had about 20 cases a day. These uh, numbers rose now to 500 cases a day. But the most interesting part is while we have an increase in cases, and we don't really have any social restrictions, only face masks, we have seen a very, very slow, mild increase in the number of severe cases and hospitalizations. So knowing that about 90% of all these vulnerable persons aged over 50 year old are already vaccinated, we're seeing more cases, but we're not really seeing many more hospitalized. We rose to only 40 severe cases in the entire country where back in early June we had 30, but really not, not a, a sharp increase, unlike what we experienced in previous waves, the largest wave in December and January when we did not have anyone uh, vaccinated. 
So I think what we're seeing is vaccine impact that's mainly on the rise of severe cases. So we do see infections, and some of them are breakthrough infections in, in vaccinated, but we're not seeing these people getting severely ill, getting hospitalized, and therefore we are able to maintain a relatively normal uh, uh, life. Right, which is encouraging to know. But Dr. Leshem, as you mentioned, the only containment measure in place right now to deal with the resurgence in Israel is the wearing of face masks indoors. As a medical expert yourself, do you suppose more restrictions are needed? No. Uh, at present, I think Israel has a long enough breaking distance to monitor the number of severe cases. And even if we see a sharp rise in uh, infections, as long as we don't see many severe cases and hospitalizations, we can maintain a relatively normal uh, state of living. Understanding that when you place social restrictions, when uh, people uh, can, when children cannot go to schools, when commerce and, and uh, jobs are affected, there is also an economic cost and an indirect health cost. So there's going to be a continuous balance between making sure we don't have an overflow of severe cases and making sure normal living, schools, uh, workplaces and commerce continue in a, as normal as possible condition. Right, a very valid point, of course. Professor Chong, there is talk about the Delta variant emerging as the dominant strain here in the country starting perhaps next month. What is your outlook? Yeah, I think it's, it is a matter of time uh, before we have a Delta variant to be the most uh, prevalent one in, in, in Korea, unfortunately. Uh, last month, uh, the percentage, the proportion of Delta variant uh, among whole viruses found in, in, in Korea was only 9%. That's not the big uh, uh, figure. But as of first week of July, it has risen to uh, 20% almost. So it's, it's a tremendous rise. So if you look at the United States and other countries uh, which are suffering from a Delta variant, uh, we saw a 10% increase every week. So we, have, uh, we had the 20% uh, uh, the first week of July, then 30% next week, 40% uh, two weeks later. Then uh, by the end of uh, July or first week of August, we have uh, 50, more than 50% of Delta variant in Korea, uh, which is the most predominant uh, variant in Korea. So uh, as I have already said, the Delta variant is a very strong one, very, very more transmissible, more contagious, and it causes uh, the mission 2.2 uh, 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 fold. And uh, it, th even though the, the vaccine can prevent, but uh, you cannot prevent uh, the vaccinated people to spread uh, the, their own viruses to others. Even though the vaccinated people cannot suffer much uh, from Delta virus, but Delta virus that, uh, that they are owning is, uh, can be spread to others. So this is a very important time for, for Korea government and for Koreans uh, I'm really afraid of uh, uh, coming days uh, to see a uh, racketeering uh, number of uh, uh, daily tallies. On top of that, uh, the number is very important, but the character of the number, uh, you should think about that. Because the 100 uh, confirmed cases uh, two months ago is not equivalent to a 100 cases uh, today. Because the same number has, has not similar transmission rate. So when you have a more Delta variant, you have a more contagious. So uh, the same 100, uh, two months ago, now we have a 100, that will be not 100, 120 or 150. So we have to accept this figure more seriously than before. Right. And staying with variants, Professor Kim, as you mentioned earlier in the program, or as Sua mentioned that is earlier in the program, over in Belgium, a 90-year-old woman passed away in March after contracting both the Alpha and Beta variants. What is known thus far about these dual exposures to COVID-19 variants? Well, um, uh, generally, double infection with similar variants is exceptional, and uh, it does not necessarily mean that you're going to have more problem. 
The lady was in her 90s and she was not vaccinated. So I think the main reason of the fatality comes from her age and, and the reason she was not vaccinated. It is highly possible that uh, she might got infected from two different persons, one with alpha, one with uh, beta. And here is the main problem because uh, she might stay in some kind of facility that the, all the uh, uh, health workers should uh, take care of their, themselves, but it failed and the lady, the patient itself didn't get vaccinated. So uh, I think high risk patients should be vaccinated, vaccinated ASAP and uh, without exception and the same for the people who's carrying this high risk group. Right. Meanwhile, um, Professor Chang, I understand you have a question for Dr. Leshem. Yeah, uh, Dr. Leshem, uh, 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 nice to meet you. Uh, I had uh, a chance uh, to interview with uh, Channel 12 in Israel uh, a year ago uh, as a former director of KCDC. And we shared information about uh, Korea and so-called the K quarantine testing, tracing, and treatment. My question today is uh, your uh, Israeli government data on the prevention uh, rate of uh, Delta variant, 64% uh, with uh, your mRNA vaccine. Because uh, Public Health England uh, has reported uh, they have they, they've seen 88% of uh, preventing symptomatic uh, Delta variant and 96% of uh, preventing hospitalization. So what's your uh, interpretation on your 64% of prevention? It, does it include any asymptomatic cases or, or just symptomatic cases? So I will start by saying that uh, the 64% vaccine effectiveness was quoted as effectiveness in preventing infection. However, the Israeli Ministry of Health did not release the database and also did not release the methodology. So with this, uh, they, it's very difficult to give a comment as an infectious disease specialist, epidemiologist, on how exactly the calculation was reached. There are different methodology uh, and it is not clear yet. Uh, with the UK, the methodology was very clear and uh, published as a preprint. And for now, I would tend to count uh, uh, better on the UK data of preventing symptomatic infections above 80% and wait for the Israeli Ministry of Health to release its data. I would add two more caveats. One is that uh, in Israel, the vaccines were possibly given earlier. So some of these 64 vaccine effectiveness could be related to waning of uh, antibody levels or waning of immunity, because we know in the UK, the level of coverage rose slower, so more people were vaccinated later. And uh, another reason is Israel has a, a larger households, and so perhaps the force of infection or the number of people infected around vaccinated may have been higher, and this may have also affected the vaccine effectiveness. My final point would be that in Israel we are still seeing exactly that same very high effectiveness against a uh, severe disease and hospitalization. So the, while the Ministry of Health thought it, uh, the vaccine, two doses of Pfizer, were about 64% effective in preventing all infections, including asymptomatic, they are still over 90% effective in preventing severe disease and, and hospitalization. And that for us as public health professionals is the critical uh, 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 or the most important uh, data from, from our uh, uh, current evaluations. Right. Professor Kim, do you have a question for Dr. Leshem? Uh, first of all, we are very grateful that, grateful that you share your uh, vaccines with Korean. Uh, according to the reports, uh, uh, there are about 40, case, 40 new corona cases in Israel already got vaccinated, which means a breakthrough infection. What are your thoughts about this and uh, how serious do you think it is? Yeah, um, so it's a little bit challenging, but when over two thirds of your population already got the vaccine, then it, it, it only makes sense that among your infected, there will be some breakthrough. 
It doesn't tell us a lot about the vaccine effectiveness because what you really compare is com want to compare is rate among vaccinated compared with rate among unvaccinated. And here the, the vaccine effectiveness uh, uh, data are going to be determining. And we know that the vaccine is not excellent in preventing infection. We actually know that if you are vaccinated and have a serious exposure to a patient, there's a, a, a substantial chance you will be uh, infected. However, some data from our medical center, from Shiba Medical Center, shows that even if you get infected, as fully vaccinated, you will secrete much less virus. So the CT values or the PCR will show that you will secrete less virus and probably pose much less danger to your environment. So I would say the take home message is the vaccine is very effective in preventing serious illness and protecting those vulnerable. It is still effective in some way against becoming infected and against exposing others. And when you add the vaccine to behaving reasonably, if you are exposed, quarantine, get tested. If you are symptomatic, especially don't expose others and isolate until you get tested. Then, then you get a reasonable behavior that allows on one hand normal living, uh, going to school and continue commerce. And on the other hand, it allows for protection against the vulnerable population from severe COVID. Right. Professor Kip, keeping in mind what Dr. Lesham has just said, a great portion of our new infections are made up by young adults. What are your thoughts then of perhaps speeding up the inoculation process for these young people? Uh, if we put our f focus on uh, mortality, it doesn't matter who gets the uh, vaccine first because uh, the high-risk group is already uh, vaccinated. Since uh, uh, we learn lessons from other countries like uh, uh, UK or Israel, uh, they have a resurgence of cases and mostly from younger uh, age groups. Uh, they have to go to school, they are socially active, and uh, they stay asymptomatic even though they got infected. So there's high chance to spread among a population. Personally, I, personally, I do agree that anybody under uh, over I mean, 18 should be vaccinated if there's a uh, vaccine available. And government should do the best to supply the vaccines, especially in Seoul and Gyeonggi province in Korea before it spread out to other uh, areas. And uh, if, we, if we talk about students over 12, it's another uh, story. It's very uh, difficult to make conclusion, but uh, if the safety issue is solved, I think they should be uh, included in the vaccine group later on. Right. Meanwhile, Professor Zhang, the last time you were here, you spoke about the possibility of the balloon effect of stringent social restrictions here in the Seoul area, in the greater Seoul area, raising the risk of contagion outside of the capital area. What are some ways perhaps of then preventing this phenomenon from occurring? Well, uh, in the Seoul area, we have a uh, grade four, level four. And the other area, like uh, vicinity a, a provinces, is Gangwon and Chungnam, Chungbuk area, maybe one or two. So there is a, a big gap between uh, two areas. So there could be a balloon effect. It's only one hour's drive uh, uh, apart. So each local government uh, should monitor the traffic volume and movement of uh, people by monitoring a mobile phone system or sometimes uh, uh, crowdness in, 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 in their restaurants or some reservation uh, rate uh, of accommodation uh, over there. So if there is a, a danger sign over there, then uh, they could uh, cooperate with the central government that they could uh, get the level up. Uh, that's the only way to, uh, to, to prevent the ballooning effect uh, 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 outside the Great Seoul area. Right. And Dr. Lesham, one final question to you then. This past weekend, Israel talked about giving a third Pfizer dose to those with weak immune systems. What are your thoughts on this? Well, we have some data that uh, published in major journals that people who are severely immunocompromised uh, and did not seroconvert, did not develop antibodies after they got only two doses of mRNA vaccine, 
Some of them did seroconvert after a third dose. And considering that we have uh, uh, several uh, thousands or even tens of thousands of these citizens in Israel, uh, the government has decided to move forward and offer this population uh, a third dose of the vaccine. And this will happen in the next few weeks. Of course, trying to study if indeed some of them seroconvert and are more protected against uh, uh, COVID. Right. All right, Dr. Lesson, thank you very much for your thoughts and your time. Professor Chong here in the studio, thank you for your insights today. And Professor Kim, thank you for being, being with us. Thank you. Right, the Greater Seoul area faces level four social restrictions for two weeks starting on this Monday. So do seek to do your part to stem the spread of the fourth wave here in the country. Thank you for watching.